ever, ever, top five dead or alive. Caviar, I'm your host Tony in the Empire of Caviar Studios coming at you from Los Angeles, California. And we got a good episode. It's gonna be chill. I didn't really have a solid discussion to talk about, but I will say that the uh there's been a lot of love for the welcome back episode of Pod Caviar, and I want to thank everybody for that. Showing me love, giving uh Look, the thing about all this stuff that we do and uh, between Graham and I and uh, with the uh, One Graham Army podcast, Pod Caviar, Shirt Caviar, Game Caviar, all the caviars. Look, if you you don't have to, we want you to subscribe. You don't have to to go you know, overboard or be a diehard or all that. Look, you can you can share a post that we post whether it's an episode whether it's something funny something that will potentially uh widen the horizon and get new people looking at our content all we do all we ask for you is to subscribe that's it that's it whether it's pod caviar the most widely available podcast in the world whether it's the one grandmommy podcast available on all major podcast platforms whether it's shirtcaviar.com Spend one minute there, and you will find the next shirt that will stimulate your wardrobe. Whether it's it's Game Caviar, live stream, subscribe on YouTube. If you want to be notified when I go live, press the, bu- press the bell next to the subscribe button. I mean, that's it. And it's great. The, the amount of support that we've gotten so far has been great. I'm not going to lie. So let me spend the first, uh, what is it? 30 seconds or so of this this episode saying thank you to all my supporters and all the supporters of the Empire of, of Caviar um, and the uh, supporters of the One Grand Army podcast. That's what I was hearing. I had my iPad on. I got the game on. So uh, we got the uh, Rams 49ers game on uh, Sunday Night Football. What I like about being on the West Coast is that all of these games will be over so you got all the Sunday games, the, the early games, the afternoon games, and then this being the night game, the late game. All of these games can be played, and I still have enough time in the evening to, I don't know, go do some shit if I want to. Because this game is already in uh, the second half, so when it's over, it's going to be like 8.30 an hour for now. I could still go to Walmart, go shopping, go to the beach, go eat, go do everything. This is... I love being out here and I'm glad I moved it's been a crazy year Um, uh, even you know since I started when I got here the plane that landed um, as soon as I stepped foot off of it my back was against the wall and uh, I've uh, kept going forward and now I'm at a comfortable spot in my life and I'm ready for the next level and uh, look, if you <laughs> if you got to go back and look at the the and I might make it the the uh, I took a picture. I set my phone up on this this uh, the table because when I got here, I ended up going to Long Beach and I stayed there at some cheap motel. And I mean, it was just it was good, but it was like uh, it was icky. 
but um that's how it was until like the beginning of february when i got my apartment i had the hotel hop but that place right there was like it was crazy and i was watching uh playoff football and i sat my phone up on the table and i had a because it had an old style phone and it. it wasn't a rotary phone but it was the the square phone that was beige you know probably like your grandparents had one and it had the buttons on it and everything so i act like i was like on the phone like handling business but i just took a picture and i posted it on social media to let everybody know that i got out here and that i was okay and i got out here at like the end of no what was it it was like two weeks it was like what was it the second week uh no it was the last two weeks of january and it was crazy because i had to just keep hotel hopping bro i'm telling you i told y'all the story of when uh when kobe died that was the last episode right it was either that or it was on game caviar but it was it was um that was crazy and then i had to go i came back in town closer to where i work at or whatever and i stayed at this other um what was it motel that was called like good night inn or some sh no that was the place in I think that was a place in Calabasas. Uh, but the place that I'm talking about, I can't remember the name of it, but it was so fucking rough. And it was so cold. Like, it doesn't get cold, cold here. Like, it does it up north or even in Georgia. It's comparable to how it was in Georgia. Georgia gets way colder. But if you have, like, a hoodie or something, then you'll be fine sweatshirt sweatshirt jean jacket combo or something like that hoodie and a long sleeve shirt you should be fine but it was so cold that night and i was gonna walk but i was like fuck that i'm not gonna do that shit and then that was i ended up ordering doordash that night and then the next night it was like this fucking couple this messed out drug head couple was arguing and like the dude had locked the girl out so she would leave and then she'd come back and she'd be like banging on the door boom 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 i wonder if i could pull that shit up on snapchat because i had it um i had recorded that shit because it was fucking funny man and then at that time i had already been uh like i said homeless hotel hopping i had went and um i had got sick real bad and uh right like right like a week after i got here and that was terrible and then it was like um i took anything that any any opportunity to laugh or smile or whatever i took because it's always been that way when i'm going through something i just mm, i never lose my sense of humor and you, you i mean I, I tell people that like yo you gotta laugh you gotta laugh you gotta laugh at yourself you laugh at whatever you laugh at the situation laugh at something just find humor because because when you start laughing at things to me it's like whatever i was mad at wasn't even that serious and it helps me move on so let me see if i can find it hold on hold on hold on, hold on. here it is oh my god i found it oh no 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 oh i got my headphones on hold on i found it though What the fuck? It's like... There it is. And that's me laughing at it. Hold on. She's basically like just cursing him out and like banging on the door and shit. And it was so funny because it was entertaining at the time because like I said, I just I had to laugh at that shit and I needed that because things were rough. Things were really, really rough person personally and then um well professionally it was like here's your new job, you got a lot of shit to learn. And so I had to hit the ground running there and then it was the constant thought of Am I going to eat today? Am I going to have somewhere to stay? I was getting help from my family, friends and family. Thank you for that. That was all appreciated. It was just a lot going on. And um, I was laughing at it. And then I would look through the peephole. And then the guy that was staying directly across from me 
every time they came back and started arguing, he would just open the door and he would just sit there. And he would like enjoy it. It was like a real life. That was that was reality TV. You know, it was just like you know that was like something that you would see on reality TV. Maybe like intervention or some shit like that. Like if A and E had a whole camera crew there in the segment. I would not even bat an eye. And the fact that it's L.A. is like, you're, you're going to see crazy shit. You're going to see crazy shit. And that was some of the crazy shit that I've seen so far. Um, I found some laser discs in the... Um, and, oh, my God, like, I have so much to talk about because everything is bad. Like, these things that I've talked about, but on uh, the One Graham Army podcast, because I was able to get on with Graham and I uh, get on the phone and so we can have that um, going on for a few episodes. But... I was in, I was, I, I take the bus because it's, it's just easier to do that way. Um, and it allows me to get my PT in, you know, get some 30 minutes of activity. This is what I tell people to do. I try to be active at least 30 minutes a day. But at the bus stop that I go to one day, I was like just hanging out, waiting for the bus. And I happened to look into the trash can there. I know, yuck, but whatever. But I, I found some laser discs. They were like two Korean karaoke discs and a third one. The third one was a laser disc of the Forbidden Dance, the Lombada. I'm telling you, growing up as a kid, I heard about that movie. I may have seen that movie like once, but that was like the early in the 90s, in the 80s, in the late 80s, in like the whole 90s. And I was like, how random is that? For me in 2020 to find not a DVD of the Forbidden Dance, the Lombada, not a Blu ray disc of the Forbidden Dance, the Lombada. No, 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 no. I didn't even find like a printout of the script of the Forbidden Dance, the Lombada. No. I found a laser disc. And for those who don't know what a laser disc is, it is an archaic technology. It's like when movies were first put on discs that were the size of records and they you had to put them in a laser disc player and it allowed them to have like director's cuts that were like four or five hours long and it was just unbelievable. But I found that and I kept it and I plan on putting it in a shadow box. I want to have, when I get in my mansion, um... I'm going to have a, a section that's like all the stuff that I went through in the first half of the year. Uh, so I want to put it all in like display cases and have little descriptions and everything uh, so that people, when people come over, they can be like, oh, shit, this is dope or oh, shit, this is tragic or whatever. But my whole thing is art, 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 art is my thing. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll take my tragedies and turn them into art. It's part of the reason why I kept Sure Caviar going and it the things that I've going that I've gone through, I've always been able to turn them into art. And the prime example of that is the No Gods, No Masters line, which um it the just the title alone, to me, it stands for anything can go wrong. What you thought was something may not be that in um, life, if it has the opportunity to beat you senseless, it will do it as much as possible. So you have like all the bad thoughts, stereotypes, all the bad situations. Take them, take them, and make them into art. If you if you were if you've been following Shirt sure Caviar since 2015, you would know the the first No Gods No Masters were they were so. Um, in your face and they were so over the top but they were true because you got vanity is good um celebrate their demise um they will never love you what was the other one get the last laugh and i talk about them often because i mean those are some of my favorite designs they were fun to make and um, I brought them back in 2020. So at the end of, uh, well, sometime this month, I will release No Gods, No Masters 2. And it's a whole set of new designs that are just as wicked and just as um, cerebral or just as extreme or in your face or all those keywords I said five seconds ago. Um, they're the same. 
and you also have the 2020 collection and you also have the uh the 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 front patch for those of you who know about the difference between the front patch and the side patch i explained that in a video that i put on twitter recently but you have to follow me on twitter at not having it to see all this stuff because i'm always talking about it either on facebook twitter uh, not so much instagram but snapchat snapchat is really cool because in this area and um i know you could do it in other areas but in this area for real like seriously you could go on uh take, take a snap and then add it to the hour story and basically anybody in the world that clicks on los angeles has a a chance of seeing your snap and if it's even remotely um interesting you can get like 5,000 views at least. And so just think of, I'm in LA and I put a snap on our story. It gets 5,000 views, but I list shirt caviar on it or I link shirt caviar or I put my snap code. Dude, I have gotten so many new followers and I've met so many people just by doing that. Just the other week when we went downtown, when the Lakers won the championship, we were celebrating and we were taking snaps, I was taking snaps and it was crazy, bro. And I had, um, we made the news and everything. Like we were in the background jumping up and down, celebrating. I got uh, interviewed by a guy from USA Today. Um, I need to go look that article up and see whether he, uh, oh, ooh, 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 the Rams, the Rams just threw an interception in the end zone, Jared Goff just threw an interception in the end zone. They are down 21 to nine in San Francisco. And uh, Garoppolo has been playing great. And I'm mad I didn't start him today for fantasy football. The only reason why, you know, fantasy football, and I don't mean to jump topics, but ADHD is real and I have it. But fantasy football has made me a bigger uh, football fan than I ever uh, would have imagined that I would become and I'm glad because oh, I gotta stop doing that I have and I will pull up let me pull up my team real quick since we're jumping topics Yahoo, Yahoo Fantasy Football so I started Matt Ryan today um, he did very well I got CeeDee Lamb playing tomorrow for Dallas. Calvin Ridley for the Falcons. He did good as well. Um, what's his name? A.J. Brown from the Titans had two touchdowns. He just came back recently from injury. I got uh, Mike Davis from uh, the Panthers, who's taken the, the place of um, Christian McCaffrey, who I also have on my team. I was lucky enough to get his backup. And I was double lucky enough that his backup was actually worth a fuck. So this guy has been keeping my team afloat, so to speak. Uh, I got LaMichael Perrine from damn the Jets, but I need the Jets to start him. Okay, it's time to start your younger players because you have, uh, what's his fucking name? Frank Gore is starting in front of him. And I, I, you know, Frank Gore is a veteran. I get it. I'm not disrespecting Frank Gore, but Frank Gore should probably be the backup now because he's like past his prime he's on the way he's on his victory lap greg kittle is playing right now he already got he has got seven targets five receptions for 91 yards and touchdown 40 yard touchdown that's pretty good uh alan robertson he uh he got 53 receiving yards and cam newton he had a rough game they end up losing but he just came back from COVID. And uh, that's my starting offense. Uh, I, got, uh, I picked up Mason Crosby because uh, the Saints, I had to hit their kicker, but they're on a bye week. Uh, I picked up Miami because you know, it's a defense. They actually did pretty good. I got Levante David and uh, what's this guy's name? Blake Martinez from the Giants. So I had a pretty good day today. But yeah, um, fantasy football, it gets you involved in the, the sport and not just a team. So I'm following all these teams and in, in just so deep into the stats and the sleepers and who I'm at. I missed out on Claypool because he was on the waiver wire and then I missed out on him because somebody else scooped him up. It's whack how that happens, but whatever. Who am I going to complain to? I'm the commissioner of the league that I'm in, so I don't know. And if you lose out on it, then that's just part of the game. It's nothing that I can really change that um, 
that will uh, th- th- that will fix fix that. It's not a problem. You just gamble on picking up people, and if somebody has a higher ticket than you, then that ticket gets called, and you get to go fuck yourself. That's how it is in fantasy football. It's a uh, it's a rough sport. It's a virtual sport, but it is very competitive. We have a no shit championship belt that we pass around between whoever wins the championship. And it's real. It's real, and it gets really fucking nasty. But I love playing it. It's all good, you know? So, what are we at right now? We're at 20 minutes right now. I've rambled for 20 minutes. Listen, if you want to see me ramble, you got to go to Game Caviar. Find Game Caviar on YouTube and subscribe to it because now I got it set up to where I can have YouTube on there. We can look at protest, live protests. I could talk about that. I could, I, the one video I was looking at old TV commercials from the 2000s, early 2000s, and I was reminiscing about that. You got the face cam. You could see me. You could see videos. You can uh, come in there and comment on shit. And then we could talk. It, it's fun. It's amazing. It's another way for me to further the empire of caviar. When you have these hobbies or these businesses and you're doing a startup and you don't have investors and you don't have a bucket of cash laying around that you can just throw at this shit, you got to find innovative ways to have free advertising. So you can have a podcast that's free for the most part. $15 a month is damn near free. But if you don't, don't want to pay that, you just start a YouTube channel channel that's free you get on all the social medias and make them connect to each other and then you're always cross-referencing um your other hobbies or endeavors on the other ones and they all tie together very well so if you're listening to the podcast and you want to see something you want to watch me ramble about stuff on uh game caviar then you can watch that it'll either be a gameplay Me playing the game, I was playing the Cold War, Call of Duty Cold War beta yesterday. I might get back on tonight because the beta is still going for this weekend in lieu of the game being released next month. Um, I was just talking about the game, seeing how it plays, giving my insight into it, screaming a lot because it is Call of Duty. And um, it was just fun. It's just fun. It's just fun. You got the podcast, you got the game channel. And I know I'm plugging this shit a lot because I want to really, I'm in a position now to where I'm out here in LA and uh, 2020 has been a shithole dumpster fire for the most part. And now I have everything in place to continue to serve um, the way that I should have been doing from day one of this year, or at least when I was coming out here, like I have to play catch up. This year was I had so much momentum in 2019 for sure caviar. I was like, man, hell yeah, I'm gonna. If you can hear the sirens outside, yeah, I was like, man, I'm gonna go out to LA. I have all this momentum. I'm gonna just hit the ground running, and I'm gonna just. Mm, this is gonna be the year. But I still have time. It's October, and I know I missed a whole lot of the year because the pandemic really was a gut shot to shirt caviar. I talked about that in the last episode. So if you haven't listened to the last episode, please check that out. Uh, But we recovered. Shirt Caviar recovered. And it's still support. I love the fact that it has a cult following. I love the fact that people that I know will call me up and be like, these designs are banging. I just ordered this and I love it. They'll like send me pictures of them um, wearing the shirts. And I love that. I love that. The underground cult following. These are where all your favorite artists, your brands, all of them started. In a in in underground or in a garage or in a a a bedroom or room in a house or an apartment. Do you think Amazon Prime was like day one? No, 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 no. Amazon started by selling books, and now they sell everything from A to Z. It says it in their logo. But if you don't have the vision, you won't see that. I know a lot of people that have their own, they started their company or they started their own endeavor and they're like, man, this shit sucks. I'm like really doubting it and I don't want to stop. And I'm like, you could, honestly, you could. And I don't, and I never really, I'm not like fucking Tony Robbins or whatever their name, whatever his name is. And I'm not like going to go in my YouTube motivational video speech. And I just tell them straight up like, yeah, it's going to suck. It's going to suck, but it's going to let you know who really fucks with you and who doesn't. Because a lot of your customers will be people that you never met. And a lot of your so-called supporters will be um, non-existent when it comes down to actually doing something. I was lucky enough that my people 
and and like my support system was strong as shit before I even started Shirt Caviar. And then as the years go went by, I would get repeat customers, whether they're people that I know or like people that I've never met before or like people that I game with. So that it's an internationally known company now because we can ship, we can produce shirts, hoodies, face masks and ship them worldwide. Right now, even while the pandemic is still going on, we still served. There was never a point in time this year where Shirt Caviar didn't serve. The delay was reasonable because of the pandemic. Um, but now, now we got front packs, side packs, hoodies. The pricing has been uh, standardized, uh, uniform, $20 for shirts. Uh, $30 for hoodies, $18 for face masks. There are some products that are outside of that price range, but not many of your all over print hoodies uh, will be uh, more expensive because it costs more to make them. At the end of the day, I always want a short caviar to be different than what was available. I did that and I wanted to make it affordable. I've also done that. So $20 shirt, $30 hoodies, and then $18 face mask and the, the, the designs are eye popping. But what I want to say is that um, I just tell people the story of Shirt Caviar. I go through, through it and tell them what I went through and tell them that I never say like, you know, you can't give up now. You can't give up now. You got to keep going. Like, no, I'm not from the future. I don't know. I don't fucking know. But I can just tell you my story and tell you that. When people tell me that they're ready to give up or that they want to, you know, stop or like people aren't sharing their stuff or like people will support everybody else but them. Fuck them haters, bro. Fuck them all. It just means that you're doing the right thing because I went through that shit, too. And I went over that shit. The people that fuck with my brand and the people, the people that fuck with all my uh, the, like the empire of caviar, the Cavamaniacs, they already know I'm going to serve a good product. And if it's fucked up, I'm going to take care of you because I'm not a scumbag. I model the the uh, I, I took I, I looked at all of the major brands, major companies, and I was like, what are the best things about these companies? You got Nike. They have brand recognition. They are worldwide known. They're just big. You got Supreme that started off as an underground. Um, uh, what is it? I think, man, if I'm not mistaken, Supreme was like a, a skateboarding shop at first or something. And then they branched out and became what they are today which is dope and that's also why i'm not afraid to put sh the shirt caviar logo on like weird products here and there it's inspiration from the big companies that that i was like oh okay that'd be cool um the customer service is um uh, tailored after amazon because they have great customer service and it's just you got to keep going you got to keep going you got to keep uh, you got to pay attention to the market that you're in pay attention to what other companies are going doing that's working well for them and try to tailor it to your company don't make a direct copy but i'm not copying amazon by saying i have great customer service no it's an inspiration you know i'm not copying supreme by saying oh you know i have a cold following underground no that's just normal shit Bro, I mean, that's just, they did it, and I'm following their footsteps. I mean, that's just the, I mean, that's just the natural progression of a company like Shirt Caviar. You feel me? I want to be world, worldwide known. I did that. It's just getting bigger. The momentum keeps building, so you got to keep going. Never bet against yourself. But understand that you have to keep evolving because if you don't, if Amazon never, like, what, what if they just sold books today? Or you, do you think that they're going to be the biggest company, you know, as big as they are now? No, fuck no. They had to change. And sure, Caviar has gone through a lot of changes. But the things that remain are the foundation. Great products. The designs are unbelievable. Um, great pricing. $20 shirts, $30 hoodies. And... You got great shipping, and it's just, you keep those things. You put those on your foundation, and then, yeah, you can try different products, different things, whatever sells, keep it, whatever doesn't sell, shit can it. I mean, you know, it's sure there's designs that I've made that I've never sold one of, but they're still on the website. There's uh, shirts that I made that I thought was ugly as shit, 
but people loved them. I always tell the story about the fucking zebras. There was like I was I was back on uh, I was spending hours on Photoshop just meticulously making each design. And then one day I was like it was two zebras and I was like ah oh, I'll splash a color, make this zebra one color, make this zebra another color, make it into some sort of avant-garde abstract piece. It looks kind of like um a Warhol piece almost. And Warhol's like one of my favorite artists. So I was like okay, all right. I didn't think anything of it. People went ape shit crazy over that design, and I was like, okay, cool. It just goes to show that you can know a lot of shit. Like, I went to college. I have a degree in graphic design, but you never really know all the shit. So what I took from that experience is that I may think that the design that I spent hours on is a masterpiece and that people should, like, want to line up and get it, but that's not the reality. No, that design isn't bad at all. It's actually a great design. But sometimes the simple design will win. That's how it is. So don't beat yourself up. If you made a product that doesn't sell, make another one. Make another one. Ask people what they want. Keep an eye out for what you see in the stores or what people are wearing. I'm always like checking out people's shirts or what's for sale or how the shirts are made. A lot of these companies have gone away from the direct to garment printing and have gone to like a vinyl printing almost. And I don't like the vinyl prints, but I've keeping, I'm keeping an eye out on them. I can get a vinyl cutter and make shirts locally inside, you know, and just have them, which I might do. Cause I could take them to Venice beach or Santa Monica or long beach and just hand out free shirts and cards. That's something else that I could do. That's easy. And it's not expensive. So you got to figure out your free advertising, which can be done through social media. I told you about the Snapchat, the Our Story, the uh, making sure all of your social media accounts link into it because you got to make your own universe. You got to make your own universe. And when you do that, then people will know that, oh, shit, yeah, that's that, and that's that, and those two are under the same umbrella, so if I support that, then I, I, I'll support this as well, and it all starts to come together, and that's the momentum that we're building now with the Empire of Caviar in the One Grand Army podcast. I mean, we've gotten better. We will continue to get better, and like we've always said, starting a podcast or a YouTube channel or a business, starting that shit isn't hard for the most part, especially the YouTube channel or the podcast. Continuously doing it is the hard part. Finding the motivation to continuously do it is the hard part. And a lot of people stop, they give up, and they walk away from it. And when you do that, you sell yourself short because you never know. You ever seen that meme with, like, the two dudes on top of each other and they're digging and, like, one dude uh, was walking away, but he almost found, like, the diamonds. But right when he got to the diamonds, he stopped and walked away. So he didn't get any diamonds. The other dude got the diamonds. And the, the moral of the story is basically the theme of this whole episode is that don't stop. Stop when you're dead. Because even in the beginning of this year, when I was broke, homeless, sick, and I, I did, you know, I was just, I, I was just, on my ass for the most part and it was the roughest time ever i still designed added to maintain and progressed my store and it helped me it, it and it helped me because like i said we never stopped serving shirts so i was making sales when i was damn poor and that was helping me survive and I wouldn't have done that if I had said, oh, man, everything's a failure. I'm a failure. I'm just going to give up and walk away. No, fuck that. No, 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 no. I'll stop when I die. And so should you. But we had 30 minutes, 33 minutes, almost 34, 34 minutes. Thank you for watching it. Uh, wow. Damn. See, Game Caviar got me fucked up. Thank you for listening to this podcast episode that is audio only. But be sure to subscribe to the podcast. Hit the subscribe button. This is the wildly, the most widely available podcast in the world. It's everywhere, even on iHeartRadio. And I'm, I don't know whether a fucking single soul uses iHeartRadio, but I'm on there. There's no, ex there's no excuses. What I say in the last episode, it was either on Game Caviar or this one, but I was like, I said it recently. I said, when we went downtown Friday, there was a guy with a, a bag full of like Lakers shirts, and he was like, and I was like, how much are they? He said, $10. I said, do you take card cash or uh, cash app or whatever? He was like, I take all that shit. There's no exceptions. 
Man's is on his grind. He got my money. Them dudes across the street that were just like, oh, we want to take cash? Nah, fuck that. Nope, we walked right past them. No exceptions. If you want to make the money, go make the fucking money. If you want to make the money, make the... What, what? Oh, no, I had a good saying. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not going to end the podcast until I get it. It was... If you want to make the money make the money easy to be made or some shit i don't know man i said it it was cool though but it's basically like look man if you want to make money make make it easy no it was if you want to make money make it easy for people to give you their money and how do you do that don't just fix yourself into a box of in 2020 i only take cash like fuck you dude you ain't taking shit from me go that extra mile you go look on short caviar. You got the Google Pay, Apple Pay, credit card, po- uh, the PayPal, whatever. Okay. The only thing I don't take is cash because it's a fucking website. What are you gonna do? You're gonna mail me twenty dollars in the mail? No, 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 no. And if you know me personally, then just hit me up, and you can pay me through Cash App. And then when I start the brick and mortar store, you goddamn right, you can pay me through Cash App, Venmo, whatever. No exceptions, motherfucker. That is that. And, that was the lesson, and I learned that lesson. I mean, I already knew it, but hearing somebody else say that, I don't know, man, because hearing him say that at that point in time, it, like, struck a chord with me, and I, it just, I was just like, dog, that's dope as shit. Just him saying that, no exceptions. That's dope, and that's, like, it's motivating. So I'm passing this motivation on to you. Thank you for watching this. Oh, no, damn it. Again, uh, you didn't watch it. You listen. Thank you for listening to this episode of Pod Caviar. If you enjoyed this episode and want to become a member of the uh, Empire of Caviar, please subscribe to this podcast, subscribe to the One Gram Army podcast, subscribe to Game Caviar on YouTube, and uh, go to shirtcaviar.com and just enjoy the art. And if you want to buy like 10 shirts go ahead just put them all on the counter put them all on the cart and buy them it's cool they, we're gonna print them on and ship it to you and if there's a problem hit us up and we'll take care of it right then and there no exceptions thank you for listening i will be back next week for another great episode of pod caviar peace <laughs>